Our story today is about a family who dreamed of a good life in another country. The Kotinko family is one of those who are lucky enough to work and live in New Zealand. Their life was very beautiful and very good when suddenly the worst dream happened in their lives when the light of the home of the Gutinko family was murdered. Was Blessy Gutinko. Blessy Gutinko was 56 years old when the crime happened. She was a native of Cebu City, Philippines, and it is also where she met her husband about 30 years ago, who was Antonio Gutinko. They were childhood friends and also went to the same school when they were young. After they dated for a few years, they then decided to get married and had three children to two boys and a girl. It was in 2004 that the family decided to live in Auckland, New Zealand. Blessy was happy and content with her life in New Zealand. Her husband had a stable job and also had many friends there. The Kotinko family had close family ties and often they always go for walks and make good memories together. She was the only woman that Antonio loved and his world revolves around Blessy and their daughter. They had been together through hardships and comforts for more than 30 years. According to Antonio, Blessy is the light of their home, the love of his life, and his closest best friend. He always tells Blessy that if someone dies first, it should be him because he can't live without Blessy. However, on the 24th of May, 2014, the life of the Gutinko family changed forever. Blessy didn't come back home after her work on that day, and it was 8 o'clock at night in Birkdale in Auckland, New Zealand. When Blessy was on her way home from her job at an insurance company, she took a bus ride for transport, which was bus 973. And when she got to the bus stop near her house, Blessy decided to walk but it was only five houses away from her home. It was a cold night and she was walking fast because Blessy was not comfortable walking on that part of the road. It was also dark, yet she still decided to go on so that she could go home quickly. And during that moment, it was Blessy's last night here on earth. Bea, who is Blessy's daughter, came home from work around 3 in the morning. When she noticed that her mother was not still at home, she then called her two brothers. They also didn't know where Blessy was. Bea tried to find her mother with the help of the Find My iPhone app at around 6 o'clock in the morning, which they found Blessy's cell phone on the grassland on Salisbury Road, 100 yards away from their house. In the same place, they also found a shoe that belonged from Blessy in the lunchbox that she usually uses. When the police arrived, they thought it might be a case of a hit and run due to the position of Blessy's belongings. But while investigating, it became more clear that something tragic happened to Blessy. A woman who lives near the area of the incident said that she heard a woman scream that night. The same time, Blessy got off from the bus. The police checked the CCTV and that's when they saw a BMW car which had overtaken the bus that Blessy was riding. This led the police to question a 20-year-old Tony Douglas Robertson who was known to be the driver of the said vehicle. According to Tony, he didn't know who Blessy Gutinko was. It turns out that Tony Douglas Robertson had just been released from prison five months before the crime took place. He was on an extended supervision order. The police are monitoring him 24 hours using a GPS. In addition, he also had a curfew time from the police where he should be at home before 8 o'clock in the evening until 6 o'clock in the morning. Because of the GPS tracking device it was attached to Tony, the police were able to track his every movement that day. They saw that he was at the same bus stop, the time when Blessy also got off from the bus. After that, he went to the Exdale Cemetery 
which was also trapped, and in the next morning, Tony again returned to that same cemetery. This gave the police suspicions and decided to search the Exdale Cemetery, and together with the help of police dogs, just two days after starting the search operation, Bessie's body was discovered under the pine trees. Bessie's body was covered with leaves and debris while wrapped in a blanket. Bessie was raped and her body was repeatedly stabbed multiple times. The police immediately arrested Tony and charged him with murder and rape. According to reports, during that night of the incident, Tony ran over Bessie with his BMW car which broke two bolts in her leg. After which, Tony then got out of the car to pick up and dump Bessie's body into his vehicle. Tony quickly then returned to his house because he had to be home before 8 o'clock due to the GPS monitoring attached to him. Because he was able to get back on time, the GPS tracking device did not alert the police who were not notified about his location. It was in his garage that Tony raped Blessy. According to the investigation, Blessy died of strangulation and multiple stab wounds. However, according to the forensic scientist to examine the case, Blessy's blood had, it, had an exact match the same as the blood found in Exdale Cemetery, where Blessy's body seems to have been dragged by Tony there. According to the doctor who examined Blessy's body, Blessie might have survived if the only basis was the injury she got in the car crash. But because she received multiple injuries, which drained a lot of her blood that led to her death. In accordance with the investigation, Tony went to Exdale Cemetery earlier that day, and it seems like he was already planning and calculating his every move. Tony planned everything. The time when he went to the cemetery, Early that day was his final plan where he was going to dump Blessie's body. Tony denied all the evidence that pointed to him being the suspect in the case. He said he took Blessie in his car because he panicked due to his curfew. Also, he said that he didn't plan everything and he was only there at the cemetery on that day because he was just going to buy some illegal drugs. Tony also added, he only did all of this because he thought Bessie was dead or he ran over her with his car. It seems like he just wanted to make it look like that the incident was only a random attack due to his usage of illegal drugs. However, the jury didn't listen to Tony's plea and he was sentenced to lifetime imprisonment with a minimum parole of 24 years and preventive detention for the case of rape. Tony appealed to the court because he said the incident was an accident and it was not planned and he should only be charged with manslaughter. But the court did not listen to him. However, Tony's request was granted by the court not to release the details of his previous cases but the jury only released these details after he was sentenced. When Tony was only 18 years old, he had already a case for kidnapping and molesting a 5-year-old girl which he was charged for this to 8 years in prison. He was then later released in December 2013, 5 months before the murder of Plessy. While he was out of prison, Tony violated twice the conditions of his release. The judge who handled the case said he did not see any changes, even the slightest remorse on Tony's part. And because of this, the court decided that he is a danger to the residents of Auckland, New Zealand. So the court decided that he must be monitored for 10 years using the GPS tracker attached to him for 24 hours by the police. Despite the sentence given to Tony by the court, Antonio cannot still accept the fact the tragic event that happened to their family and Bessie. He said, if Tony had not gotten out of prison, and if the police were really doing their job on monitoring him, his wife Blessie would still be alive today.
Antonio expressed his thoughts towards the police. Antonio said he would give everything to restore his wife's life. But of course, it is impossible to happen. He added, We are just pretending that everything is okay, but deep inside, we are brokenhearted. We have been robbed. She is gone too soon.